Meet Roy Levy and his oxen, Mo and Joe. Seventy-year-old Roy worked for 15 years at Ross Farm Museum in the blacksmith shop, mostly with oxen. Now semi-retired, Roy still spends his time at home with his oxen and his constant companion, grandson Brandon. He starts his oxen young. And then they get big enough to put a neck yoke on them. You put a neck yoke on them and play with them that way. And the horns get big enough, then you put a head yoke on them. It's usually a year and a half old. Now they're usually about two years old, because years ago, a two-year-old steer is only about the size of a yearling steer now, because they didn't grow very fast. They didn't have the feed for them, and you couldn't, they couldn't grow. But this here is about a year old. I put a yoke on them. Roy start started as a young lad. I was about eight years old. Yeah, I used to stay home from school to make yokes for him. <laughs> My father used to buy them and sell them. He'd buy one, I'd make a single yoke for it, and I'd break that in. And then he'd come home with a mate to it. Mm -hmm. Then I'd make a double yoke and play with that. Roy well, learned from his father yeah. how to make the yoke. Mostly, yeah. He didn't teach me too much about making the yoke. I just done that on my own. I just learned that on my own. Oh, and stuff. But uh, he learned me how to drive and stuff like that. Here, stop it. And if you didn't do it right, he soon told you. <laughs> yeah, a little piece of wood. Yeah. Now with grandson Brandon, uh, he is passing on his years of knowledge and sharing a special moment, okay, making a yoke together. Go six inches each side, and that gives you the length of the beam. Lock tape down there. On the, on the front side of your tape. If you don't, well, you only have 11 and a half inches when you draw it. In the back, you go 13 inches. There. Like that. See, if you mark on this side of your tape, when you put the line across, you'll be way out here with it. And you'll make it longer. Now draw them lines on there. No, that's wrong. Yeah. That, the one on the outside. That's where you strap in there. See? And as he has all his life, Roy prefers to work with hand tools. Today, Brandon will learn some of the trade secrets. Until you get it pretty near to the line here. And then I'll cut it so you don't hit the line. And hold the axe handle down like that. Don't hold your axe handle up like that. You hold the axe handle up like that. The axe you miss, it's going to you know, hit you in the legs. So you keep your axe handle down, okay? You want that over this way? There. Cut the other side. I'm left handed. Here. Cut it this way. You're going to use the axe that way. Now don't put your hand way up there. Put your hands right there. There, like that. Now, just keep cutting across. Like that. Don't take too big of cuts. Just. But when it comes to the fine work, the older hands still have the touch. There. Put it like that and you just keep going around. Yeah. You're pull hard. Don't take two bigger bites. Just kind of take little shavings off. Now, start and do that side a little bit. Not their middle will come out. Then it'll make it easier shaving. Start right up at the top. Right there. Just take little tiny thin shavings.
Under the watchful eyes of grandfather, grandson begins to learn the ropes. Yeah, the first one I made, uh, I skipped school one day, went up across the lake and fell a piece of wood, and then I went and bored an old fellow's draw knife and another fellow's gouge and an old axe I had, and I started making the yoke. And after supper, I had the yoke done and, and steer in it. Yeah, and that's how I started. Then I had a dog with a harness and a sled, and I used to take the dog across the lake to haul the piece of wood home. And I went and don't go out there. Just leave that until you get, then you can back and get it, because you don't just keep splitting it off. Sisters, they used to make fun of me. As I'd always be late getting chores done, milking the cow and stuff in the morning, and this is Roy's going to make a yoke today. <laughs> so uh, that's, how, uh, that's how I get into this foolishness. Until I, let's move this up here a little more. It's hard work making the oats. It's hard in the arms. Did your father make his own yokes? He could make them, but he wouldn't make them. He used to hire somebody to make all his yokes. I don't know why. Someone teach you to make yokes? Me? Uh, not too much. Not too much, because usually when uh, I never had time to go around where people was making yokes and and uh, like uh, the old man he'd only get a yoke made maybe once a year or once every two years or when he traded oxen and, yeah first old fellow I seen make a yoke first shave and he took off the yoke he put it in his mouth and he chewed on that until dinner time and he went and got his dinner, and after dinner, the first shave and he took off, he stuck it in his mouth, and that was there until supper time. Yeah. This is a piece of popple wood. They usually use popple for steers, and uh, it's hard shaving wood when it's green. It shaves better after it's dry. Usually you don't know the oxen, like now, you don't see them working or anything, so you just get to make the yoke, and then uh, you put them on the stone drag and you try them. And now they're only used for exhibitions, stone drag oxen. If it ain't right, they'll, they'll let you know when you first hook them up on something. But sometimes they have a yoke on them that don't suit them, <clears throat> and then when you put a new yoke on them, it takes them a little while to get the, used to it. Something like putting a pair of shoes on your foot. If you have no pair, they fit comfortable because they're broke in. Then you put a new pair on, then you walk different. Don't do it. And stuff, but uh, that's that part of it for now. Now we need a handsaw. And I'll show you what to do. It takes a long time to learn how to make a yoke, make it right. And you get saw the strap holes in here like that. I'll just get this in the starter because it's on a slant here. And you want to saw it in now? Watch the saw don't jump up and hit your hands. Using these tools and stuff, you got to be careful because it they jump up and hit your hand or something. Here's your bed cut. Don't saw down front here too much. Saw down behind there. You can saw it down there something. Keep sawing. That's good. Now you need a chisel for the chisel that it with. You know how to do that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just take that and you just take a little bit at a time. Just, uh, so 
right between the lines, like that. You see? Just like that. And chisel the root like that. There's an old fella who used to be around New Ross named Bill Levy. He took his ox and went to the woods one day for a load of wood and he broke his yoke back in the woods. He took a double bed axe and carried my note back in the woods to bring his load of wood home. With a double bed axe, no draw a knife or nothing. So I think that was a fairy tale. <laughs> This here is only going to be cut out thin, like that, okay? Well, that's for, for your strap to go around for the strap, strapping on the ox. She's a power saw, shouldn't it? No, you saw along that line there. Yeah. So Use the hand saw, you gotta shove them straight. Yeah. I'm gonna cut this out a little bit. And you just cut that down like that. Just make that round it there. You can do that. Just keep cutting it out. Don't cut too deep. Right up to the saw cut. I'll go back to first. There we go. Smooth, because we're smoothing it up with the draw knife. Shape up here a little for you. Shape her a little deeper there. Hold on, you gotta pull on her. And then back again to the draw knife. Now, I, father, he used to buy a steer, and then I'd make a single yoke for it and play with that. And then first thing he'd come home with a mate to it, and then I'd have to go make a double yoke for them. And, and uh, I used to make a lot of yokes when I was going to school. <laughs> <laughs> or not going to school. <laughs> and then when I was, yeah, I was supposed to be going to school. Be in the way. Don't go way down there. Start up on top. Just right up there. Don't tip your knife up so much. Hold it more like that. Hold it flat so when you're shaving, it just peels it off. Let's shave it up. Like A that. yoke is fairly complex. The design is the same, but the style differs for each pair of animals. Yeah, the years ago around here, they used to have a lot of single oxen. And then if they had any heavy work like for, for do, they'd go to work and uh, borrow the other fellow's ox and they'd yoke them together. And they'd work See? them back. Now, these are the pins here. You hook the strap over that pin like that, and you have a big pad on there for the, so it protects the ox's head. And the strap goes around like that, and it comes across here. And it goes up around here like this. 
and it goes down through here, like that there. And the ox's head you see is in behind that, and that's what he pushes with. He don't he don't pull with the yoke. He pulls with the strap for his head. Yeah. And then you you wind that around his horn. But the, that's the way it is. There's, there's where we cut out for the head hole, for the head to go in. And there's where he cut out for the straps. And this here's where he cut down. This here's called the crown. This here sticks up over the yoke. And the better you make this here look, for the, the better the yoke looks. Until it. And then you've got to cut in here and cut that out. And that's where the ox and the irons goes on for the hook you chain to for the pole and stuff. And that's called the draft of the yoke. You don't get this cut right here where the, uh, the uh, oxen won't work like you can't get their head in place to work. So you, you, this here's got to be so when the oxen can stand on the pole, the yoke will set like that so they can bring their head down. And so they can't slip. Then you have a pad on there and the ox pushes again the pad. And the, and the wagon stuff's hold, hooked here and this strap and stuff holds it up tight to his horns and head so he can't move. And that's about all there is to a yoke. Well, if the old people keeps dropping out of them and young people don't start taking them up, oxen's going to disappear again. Around here in the late 50s and 60s, oxen disappeared. And then younger people started taking them up again for exhibitions. And some of the older people, after they retired, well, they went back into them for exhibition and stuff. But there was always a few around on the farms and stuff, a few old people who never went into tractors and stuff. And stuff. But the, most of the farms around here, most of them had oxen. Pretty near every farm around New Ross had a pair of oxen. But some of them had a horse or a pair of horses too because some of them used to log more than others. And like, so they used the horses in the woods in the winter time and, and the oxen too. And, uh, and stuff, but nobody uses them anymore. Yo, come on. No jumping here across the ditch, come on. Come on. There. They'll go that way towards getting the yoke off of them. Mm -hmm. To go away from it, they don't like there it. There aren't many Roy Levies around yeah, anymore. There's more cats here but the there. things Roy learned in the old school way are the things we need to preserve. The simple way.